Tom, um, obviously leaving sort of imperial agenda aside. I mean, I'm asking you again, Ian. Like there's um, in America, you have a lot of big independent push, and um, one of the most popular ones is a company called Rooster Teeth, which no doubt a couple of people my age range, sort of twenties to thirties, come into contact with, and they uh, they rose to their strength <coughs> as the most popular um, independent producer on iTunes because they have a community of tens of thousands with subscription basis and they fund themselves with that but they recently discovered that they uh, they do a, a weekly podcast and um, the, the iTunes, the impartial top 100 uh, gaming, most listened to gaming podcast, they have 98, 98 of the 100 slots. So my question is, is although putting all these sort of major corporations aside, surely at some level one independent producers are going to just build themselves up to that sort of imperial level as well and also how do we combat that? Because surely we're all up against each other. So how do I stand out on top of the people who do have those communities already? How do I get some of that action to the state? Well, I, I mean, uh, I think if you're, if you're looking at it from the beginning, you see what's out there. But what, more importantly is, is what you want to do. I mean, if it is distinctive and it is separate and you can imagine it connecting to an audience, that's what will resonate to me. I think if you're working independently, you know, what resonates and, you know, when Tony Wilson's mentioned what resonated with, for example, Factory Records is there was a, an authenticity about it. And I mean, Wilson, I remember him saying, you know, he, he just signed bands that he liked, you know, that he, he wanted to listen to. You, you, if, you're, if you're sticking to your own, if you're not trying to second guess what other people think, and then it will grow from there because people respond to that because there are so many artificial things out there when people can tune in and connect with something like, I think there's something with Phoenix Knights as well, you know, with someone like Peter Kay. People are connecting with it because it, it feels real, you know. So that's a starting point. I'm not saying that's gonna get your 100,000 followers, but. No, it's, it's absolutely right. Right, close your eyes and listen to any news broadcast. Now I used to read the news on the radio. Here we, here's how we do it. It's 10 o'clock, I'm Ian Aspin from the newsroom, blah, blah, blah. It's fake. Shut your eyes and listen to almost any voiceover on almost any program. It's fake. People don't talk like that. They don't sound like that. They don't speak like that. It's just not happening in the real world. So the programs that do that and have a bit of authenticity about it, where Tony Wilson sounds like Tony Wilson off camera as he, as he does on, and the people that are really interesting are the ones that are real. Like you say, authenticity. Where's the authenticity in almost all the messages that you hear? It's almost all manufactured, the way that people speak to each other, the way that they ask questions on television. Shut your eyes and listen to it. It's ridiculous. If my wife came into the kitchen and started saying to me, if there's any ham in that cupboard, would you please get it down now and open it? As the tin opener is on, the, you know, that's how they speak, in an affected manner. Almost every voiceover is like that, putting fake emphasis on things. It's written in a certain way to push you in a particular direction. It's engineered, it's called manufactured consent and Noam Chomsky wrote about it many years ago and it's still going on all the time but we're all, not all of us, but many of us are asleep to it and it's what we need to change. So as media people, we can do this. We can change the way things are because we can reimagine it. Can I just pick up on something you said actually that if we lose things like the license fee and if you lose things like the BBC, and I mean, it's coming in now, the sort of, you know, the ability to put advertising into programmes. What we will find is that we will become more of an American model and we will get more of this subversive language coming through and we will sadly get, um, you know, more of your Kellogg's on the table because they want people to buy Kellogg's. That sort of thing coming through and they're doing it in a much more subtle way than they did in the 50s and 60s. And that is starting to become the way to fund things because at the end of the day, whatever you make, whether it's on YouTube, going through iTunes or on mainstream television or whether it's on radio, which I absolutely love as well. Um, it has to be funded. You have to make a living. Otherwise, you're going to be working as a postman in the daytime and doing this in your evening, which is fine. But I suspect that you want to be making your living this way. I suspect that's what you want to do. Um, so it has to be funded somewhere or another. And that is potentially, at the moment, the way forward. Yeah. And not just on television, online as well. In fact, I think some of the most successful things online are even more subversive in some ways in that way because we don't expect it there. Yeah. And so we don't expect things to come upon us 
And so we're not, we're not watching out for it, which is why it's so successful for companies. BBC is a beautiful model if it worked how it's intended. How the original people who set up the BBC, they were radicals. They really were. They actually, it was a bit posh in the beginning. And obviously, I was very posh. That's why they had me working there. But what I mean is... You're a local colour. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, not everyone can be as posh as me, Mike. You know that. But anyway... Um, it was, it was there because they believed in something. They believed in, 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 some, in, in a vision for communication and to connecting with people and actually telling stories. So I think the BBC is a beautiful model, but it's not run by all of us. So if, all, if we all got control back of it, and it was actually democratic uh, in the truest sense, then we won't be sitting here having conversations about how one person out of 25,000 who tries to get in might just get in by the skin of their teeth. It will be a different way of doing things. This is what I've been writing about in my book, how can we reinvent society so it's more... So can we do something together? Can we do something that is as fun as the parks that shakes us to York? Yeah, of course, yeah. We've got to work together to figure out our talents. And So I can't edit. I'm rubbish using a camera and all this stuff. But when I got this iPhone, I started to realise that um, I could actually film stuff myself. Y you know, when, when we last met... If I'd have got my phone out like this and started going, hey, look, Mike, look what I've filmed here. I've edited it together just on the phone just today. And it, actually, I'm going to put it online and people might even like this. We'd have just laughed or even put some of this on telly if I'd got the right footage, you know. Um, so what I'm saying is by, by, by making and creating and not waiting for permission, you choose yourself, right? No one's going to choose you. You're going to be very lucky if they do. Good luck to you, but probably not. So you choose yourself and we choose each other. So I have no talents in loads of areas. I, I might have one or two talents, really kind of small things that I can do really well, and I'm rubbish at everything else, right? So that's why, who can edit in here? Right, great. Who can use a camera in here? Fantastic. Who has got a feel for a story in here? Fantastic, right. So there are all these people I could go to now, and I could say, right, I'm rubbish at this, this, and this, but I'm actually really good at this. And I can get stuff online, and I can get thousands of people to read it or look at it or watch it. I can engage people. I can stir people up. So if you help me edit something, cut something together, maybe we have a chance of actually connecting to an audience here, and we can work together to do that. Let's do that. Let's try stuff and see if we can get it out there. It's really hard because there's millions of people trying to do stuff, and it's hard to stand out, really hard. But if you start finding people who are like you or, or interested in what you do, then you can do this stuff, and then you can go to the broadcasters, and you can team up. See, Mike's got a production company in Manchester, and if I wanted to work with somebody, I'd say, Mike, I've got an idea. You already are pitching ideas to broadcasters, and you've already got a good relationship with various commissioning editors. If I went to, to see them, they'd laugh me out of the place. You know, They wouldn't even see me. But you could. Do you think this idea is any good? And that way... I might be able to have a relationship with Mike that's beneficial to him because I've come up with an idea that he couldn't have got. And then together we can go and approach a broadcaster because we've put something online and somebody's going to give us some feedback on it and so on. And that's a really good way of actually teaming up. But also you need to choose each other and work together to figure out who are the bigger people in terms of they're a bit further on than you that you can work together to say, right, let's put something together let's get it out to these people who have got some potential to help us get a commission because it's a good idea, or even guide us in terms of learning how to come with these things. Um, and that way, we can change the system. And we can say, and as ordinary people now getting online, millions of people can start saying, we don't want the BBC to be dictating this or doing that. We want it to be this, and there's nothing like this on telly. Why isn't there? And you can get all these people to sort of make you go to a politician and absolutely irritate the heck out of the politician till you get a commission to make that series or whatever. There's tons of ways of doing it, and it's really hard, but it is doable, and I think it's easier than the process that you have to go through if you want to just do it the mainstream, old-fashioned way, which is crumbling and falling apart.